Hey guys, welcome back to Crafts and Curios. I hope you're all doing well. Let's talk Toadstill Supremacy. Recently I saw Dolly Mixture's incredible fantasy fawn inspired by all things cottage core and toadstills and mushrooms. And we had been chatting in the DMs on Instagram about the cottage core dream lifestyle and toadstills. And they had asked how I made my little mushrooms from one of my previous videos so I thought it'd be really fun to do a little uh, best friend doll for their incredible fantasy fawn because when I was watching their video and I saw their beautiful blush cheeks with little dots looking like a little mushroom I knew I had to make a mushroom dress I knew I had to make a dress that looked like a mushroom like the mushroom was the dress so that's what we're gonna do today uh, so let's get right into it. To begin with, I'm taking this Ever After High doll. I don't know the name of any of them, but this is the one I'm using. And I like her because she's nice and short. She's quite little, so I am going to start by removing the factory paint as always. Whoever's doll this was before me clearly wanted to be a face-up artist as well because they have used some sort of ink to colour in the eyelids that has stained the vinyl. So I will be using the acne cream method to remove this staining. If you are unfamiliar with this method, it's when you take a acne cream with this chemical in it specifically to remove the ink you apply a liberal layer to the doll the area that is stained and then you put it under a heat source so in the sun or under a close set lamp and you just let it bake until it's dried to a powder scrape it off and you might need to do this a couple of times i do it normally about three times before the ink is completely gone and then it really works wonders it takes ink out of any vinyl it's really really good so i do recommend this method if you have stained dolls here i am just scratching off the second layer perhaps and you guys will see how incredibly different the look is it lifted that ink so quickly and so strongly out of the vinyl and now as always to remove the hair I'm just going to chop off the hair that I can see as short as possibly and then I will dunk the head in boiling hot water to soften the vinyl so I can remove the head from the body and start by wiggling around my sharp ended scissors to pull out all the glue bonds and remove the hair pegs from inside. Once all the hair plugs are removed, I can go ahead and give the doll one last treatment of the acne cream as there is some staining still just lingering in the creases of those eyelids. So I'm just going to do this one more time and then she'll be nice and ready for her Mr. Super Clear and her face up can begin. Now this is my second attempt at this face up as you can tell by the neck, I've already done some body blushing beforehand because the first round something happened where the pastels got patchy and I just didn't like how it looked so I took it all off and started again and I'm so happy I did I really like how the second attempt turns out so I've done gone ahead and rosied up her cheeks and just sketched in the initial shapes that I want to base my face up around and then I'm just going to add detail layer by layer with Mr. Super Clear in between layers. The idea for this doll is that she is a toadstool mushroom picker and she kind of lives in the forest, really relaxed, calm, peaceful energy and she dresses like the mushrooms so that the mushrooms don't get scared when she's around that they might get picked. So that's the concept so really gentle soft expression flushed cheeks and i am going to do those cute little white freckles to kind of mimic the mushroom spots that i saw on dolly mixtures video so so cute i think this is such a good idea and it's so beautiful and i'm just so happy with how it turned out on my little doll so yeah she looks gorgeous 
this is her final face up look i did blush up her knees elbows and joints elsewhere to kind of bring some life to her body as well she's gonna wear a short dress so those parts of her body will be exposed and yeah i'm really happy with how she's turning out so far and now for hair, I really struggled with choosing what color hair I was going to do. I thought if I did red or white, it would be too like on the nose. So I'm going for this kind of caramel chocolatey brown color with a gentle curl in it. Someone did ask where I get my hair from or to list the colors I use. I get most of my pre-wifted hair off AliExpress and their like names are always like numbers like 28 or something, but in the description box below I've listed the Aliexpress stores that I find the most reliable and useful for doll hair. I used my same circular method as always to apply this hair and I'm just going to tie it back before styling it so that I can finish my outfit and then decide based on that what kind of style hair I want to go for. So for the dress, obviously red, I'm going to be making a mushroom dress. So I'm going to take this just plain red fabric and then a bunch of lace is what's going to go into this. I'm starting with the white underside of the mushroom which will be my petticoat for my dress. Uh, the white side of the mushroom, I think it's called gills, is it flins? I'm not sure but to do this I layered a bunch of lace and then gathered it together just to create a really simple beautiful puffy fluffy uh, petticoat. But one layer wasn't enough so I gathered some more lace together to create a second petticoat that I'll sew onto the first petticoat to add more volume and more layers. And now for my mushroom skirt I am just painting some big mix match spots onto my red fabric to create that kind of mushroom spotty look. Really simple, I mean, I'm sure there's a more complex way to make this look more of a professional style, but I like the kind of homespun, cottage-made look. It sort of fits the narrative of the doll. It's as if she painted it herself before she went mushroom picking. Then I just made a little bodice with some lace that I sewed together very quickly, and then I'll just adhere all the pieces together, and it'll be a cute little mushroom dress. I went ahead and added a dome so that I can remove, if I desire, the petticoat from the dress just in case I get sick of the mushroom look and shape, but I doubt it, but just in case. And because my measurements were slightly off, the dress is a little small, so I am using the corseted style to pull it in nice and tight on the doll so it fits and closes at the back. And this is what the dress looks like together. As you can see, there's that bulby mushroom shape and look from the skirt. I think it looks so good. And now I thought, why not go full hog and make a mushroom hat? So I'm using the starting methods of my classic hat tutorial that I did here on the channel but I'm gonna stop before adding the top and the string and I'm going to add some fabric to create those mushroom gills just folding the fabric in on itself to create that texture and then using a bra cup of all things from a bikini you know how they can sometimes have insertable and removable bra cups well I'm taking one of those and that's going to be the dome of my toadstool so I went ahead and cut down the shape, the circle shape, so that I could just check that it fit before I wrapped the bra cup, now pseudo dome for mushroom hat, in red fabric and then I glued both sides together, inserting a little ribbon so that I could attach a kind of drawstring neckline for the hat. And with some painted dots, the little hat is done. Here it is on. Oh my goodness, she is looking so cute. But the final thing she needs is a bunch of freshly picked mini mushrooms. So to do this, I'm using polymer clay. I'm just prepping mine as it's really cold in Auckland at the moment. So just making it nice and pliable and soft for me to work with. And then I'm just gonna 
peel off tiny little bits and make kind of domed cone shapes all kinds of sizes and varying shapes of domes and I'm gonna make a bunch of these until I'm happy with how many I have now prior to baking the tops I'm gonna take a little bit of white and I'm gonna use a very small pin to apply tiny little 3d dots because when i've seen toadstool mushrooms in real life the white is 3d kind of looking dusty almost so i'm gonna do this prior to baking the red caps just because i find it adheres better and it's i don't know just preference you could do it afterwards it really doesn't matter polymer clay adheres to itself so totally preference based and after baking this is what these little guys look like so now it's about attaching the stem and the gilled under white layer side to the mushroom so I'm taking my super sculpt D this is optional you don't need to use it if anything it just makes more of a mess than it's worth but I'm going to take a tiny dot and then apply my stem in a long line and then using the same pin scrape down and flatten out where it adheres to the mushroom and then using that same pin I'm going to draw tiny little lines kind of cutting away some of the white to create the gills of the mushroom. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the skirt of the mushroom before finally uh, making those in final gill lines. So I'm taking a bit of white pollen clay and I'm really really flattening it out, thinning it out and just cutting a raw edge to create the skirt of the underside of the mushroom. This part again is completely optional, not all mushrooms have this. Um, I think it looks the most like fairy tale and whimsical and it creates a great texture to catch dusting of pastel if you wanted to make your mushrooms look a little dirty it gives it some texture to grab to that's why I also cut up the stem a little bit rough it up to add some texture for dusting afterwards but then I'm just gonna take my tiny skirt and using that pin because it's such small scale to help adhere and push it in and then I'm gonna cut down again uh, molding the white to the red and then use the pin to create the final gill lines And here's my little mushroom haul after they've all been done. They are looking so cute. The final step is just to add some brown pastel brushed on to create kind of dirty muddy look like they've been freshly picked. And here is the final completed look. It is so cute. I think this skirt adds such a whimsical fairy tale vibe. And as you can see, I did a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes with varying cap shapes and varying lengths of skirt and stem. And I think that just adds to the uh, mystical mushroom picking uh, background of my little doll. As for her basket, I'm going to be using one that I made for my recent basket tutorial as I made a bunch. Uh, you can watch that video here on my channel. I'll put a little card and time to lay these bad boys out and find a layout that I'm happy with before gluing the mushrooms in place and her accessory will be all done. 
I am so happy with how this little basket of mushrooms turned out. They are so beautiful and I think they look so cute and real. They're just so mini and so cute. So I'm really happy with this little basket of mushrooms. And now it's time to move on to shoes. I'm just taking a pair of plain pumps that I painted white and then scuffed up with some brown pastel. And then I'm going to add some uh, hobby grass to the bottom of them so it looks like she's been trekking through the forest all day. And with her shoes complete, her outfit is done and I can show you the finished look. Here is my gorgeous little mushroom doll, complete with mushroom hat, mushroom skirt, and mushroom basket. She is so adorable. I am so happy with how this turned out. I added some white stockings to really uh, nail home the mushroom look of the bottom half of her skirt and outfit. And I think she just turned out so beautiful and whimsical. I love her little face and her soft expression. I couldn't be happier with how this doll turned out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this doll and video as much as I enjoyed making this doll and video. I hope that you find my mushroom uh, method helpful and hopefully you can make some mini mushrooms yourself now. And yeah, if you did like this video, do leave us a thumbs up and a comment and hit that subscribe button to see more whimsical fun creations here on Of Crafts and Curios. If you want to see what I'm working on in real time, you can follow me over on Instagram for Of Crafts and Curios on Instagram. And we'll hope to see you guys so soon with more crafts and more curios back here. I've got so many more doll ideas and projects in the working and I can't wait to keep sharing and growing and learning my skill with you guys here on my YouTube channel. And as always if there's something you'd specifically like to see I'd love to hear about it and thank you so much for all your guys support. I love each and every one of you. Every time I see a comment or a like or subscribe I do a little happy dance and so thank you for all the love and support you show of Crafts and Curios.